Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Good afternoon. Afternoon here, anyway. Just giving a few minutes. Hey, while we're waiting for more people to joining up, join us. Let us know who's here. What's up, Stephanie? Hey, Stephanie. Good to see you. Happy post Thanksgiving. JJ, what's up with you, man? Hey there. Good afternoon. Just going to give a couple minutes people to gather on in. Wherever you are in your house, sing your congregational song to gather the people into the sanctuary. <laughs> I was glad when they said unto me, let us go mm -hmm. into the house of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, clap your hands. See, we, we know how to do this. All you people. Y'all ain't churchy. Y'all ain't churchy. <laughs> we just giving people a couple minutes. <laughs> JJ, his congregational song is more Camille. Uh, hey, we. I'm here. It, it is happening. It's happening. I am here. I am here. That's a song. <laughs> Rain fills the sky. Yet the sun is always there, though it seems to hide. Where are my commission fans at? <laughs> Waiting for the right moment. Oh, y'all don't know nothing about that. Brighten up your life, just like a mother's love. Child can rest therein and be secure. I can be that and much more if you only give me half a chance. <laughs> Don't get me going on some commission lyrics. That'll, that'll take over. That'll take over Weekly Wisdom this week. Did you see that uh, Fred Hammond said he was stepping back I don't want to talk about it. Yes. Commission. Yeah, I saw that. I don't want to talk about it. Because... What is commission minus Fred Hammond? I know. What is it? What is it? Yeah, he's stepping back, but that's all right. That's all right. I mean, you still have the recordings. Yeah. Bring back the memories. <laughs> Let's see. JJ, JJ know the commission stuff. We were, he was once a member of the distinguished brothers in Christ. I don't know if you knew that. I know no, you, I didn't know that. I, I, know, I that, know that was before you came around. I know Tony was, right? Yeah, Tony was a, a long-standing member. JJ was was with us. Okay. And then he was not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Stephanie, don't start with running back to running, you. Uh, You're going to have everybody back. crying. We're crying. <laughs> Tired of pain and I don't like. Yeah, yeah. I'm with it. It can be commission day one of these days. I'd have to pull the keyboard out for that. Yeah. <laughs> See, I can get y'all going. I, I saw the two who were on here. I, there's a common denominator. If I start talking about commission, we don't got to say nothing else. We can just say, it's so good to know the Savior that he's walking hand in hand with me. <laughs> what you know about it. Nah. So it's good to see you all. Welcome. I see others of you jo joining in. Um, let us know who's here. We're about to get, get started. We were just having some reflection time, uh, on the good old days. She said I'm an original. You're OG, the <laughs> B-I-C OG. That's a lot of initials. <laughs> Who introduced me to commission? Let me think about that, Stephanie. Um, I, you know, I, I, I think I would have to give you credit for that. Oh, this is a good one. I'm going on in the name of the Lord. I'm looking for my goal. Don't see. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. What's up, Lysandra? Hey, Lysandra. I say Lysandra. Camille says Lysandra. Camille's probably right. Um, is it? I was. I is thought it the about long that. A, the short A, the Lysandra, Lysandra? Let us know. Eh, eh, uh, eh, uh. <laughs> I say ah. Uh, and I Lysandra. say Lysandra. Eh. No, we say it different every time. 
Stephanie, I do think it was you that, that introduced, you brought the vinyl records of commission to your father's house. That's a whole nother come and go with me. No, okay. I'm going too far now. Oh, school. That's pre-commission right there. Uh, ah, La like Sa I mean, like I, I said. I told you Camille was probably right. I told you. That's fine. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. That's why we have help in our life. Sometimes we just need some help. So I'm sorry for the last 40 years. Several years. I'm sorry. I've been calling your name wrong for the last 40 years. <laughs> Lissandra. <laughs> sorry about that, you know, little error for a lifetime. We'll work on correcting that. It may take just as long for me to correct it, though. So let's see. I might be 80 something by the time I get it. I get it right if the math adds up correctly. <laughs> Uh, but no, it, it, um, it's a good day. It is, you know, we are post Thanksgiving. I am, I've gained a few pounds over the last few days, I believe. And I'm going to have to get back on the routine, back on the saddle. Um, because she made macaroni and cheese that was post worthy. Many of you all may have seen. <laughs> um, yeah, JJ is running back, running back to you. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and so she said, I knew who you were talking to. That's how I feel, Lissandra, Lissandra, Lissandra. Ooh. I have to say it a lot to it's make take it. take a minute. Yep. If people say something that starts with an R, I assume they're talking to me because it's going to be Rajel or Razel or, and that's just in my family. And then we can go Razzle or Razel. Uh, we get a lot of things. So, yeah. Yeah. That was a corny joke, Stephanie. Yeah, you're running back to you. I just left the gym myself. Is that the joke? Da 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 da. All right, all right. So yeah, good, good. Um. So today, welcome to Weekly Wisdom. Uh, we are glad that you, <laughs> Rangel, Rajel. Uh, we are glad that you all are here today. Um, we love our Weekly Wisdom family. That's extra. Yes. Okay. Um. We have been talking about Abram mm -hmm. um, and oh, but before I do all that, I was saying we had a lovely Thanksgiving. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. <laughs> you want to get back to that mac and yes, cheese? Yes, I got to get back to the mac and cheese because the mac and cheese, um, it still lives slightly. There's a little bit living. It's a little it, bit it's, left. It's barely hanging on, but it still has a pulse. Um, and so I'm going to wrap this up right now and go downstairs. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Uh, um, but we had a wonderful uh, intimate Thanksgiving mm -hmm. with the three of us. We missed uh, the family. We do a lot of hosting, um, and we hope to be able to get back to that here soon. But we had a good time with just just the three of us mm -hmm. uh, this time around. And I tell you what, it was slamming. We throw down. We know how to do what it do. I mean, mm -hmm. everything was good. Yeah. I know y'all don't believe that I have any skills, but... Let me, I highlighted her mac and cheese, but it was not the only star of the no, show. No, we, we stars together. Yeah, yeah. We, we make it do what it do. Isn't that how you say it? Or back in the, like, early 2000s, is that how you said it? All right. Uh, <laughs> um, so anyway, it's also um, my sister-in-law, her sister's birthday, Tracy. Happy birthday, Tracy. If you're birthday, seeing Tracy. this, happy birthday to you. It's a special birthday. Um, and so we're celebrating with you from afar. Yesterday was my godson Dion's birthday, his 26th birthday on the 26th of November. Uh, so we're speaking double into your life. If you happen to see this today, you are in our prayers and thoughts. And we hope that you celebrate mm -hmm. it uh, responsibly um, <laughs> and that you they call are it the golden birthday. The, that's what it is. The mm -hmm. golden birthday, the golden birthday. So and we know you're celebrating um, my new grand god baby mm. so wow you a grand godfather what, what you all right so <laughs> <laughs> she won't throw off i thought we were married uh anyhow um and then our niece jada's birthday is tomorrow it's happy birthday month. to you yeah i'm just trying to really highlight to you all that november is a month to remember november remember you see what i did there that was clever. All right, I got our timer on. Oh, it, that was that was her way of telling me, Rajel, get to the word of the Lord. 
All right. So we've been talking about Abram. Um, if you haven't watched the last two, watch them. Um, and then jump in on those two. Um, it's been great. Uh, I think we've been getting good stuff. We started out in Genesis chapter 12 where Abram was given a word to go to a land that I will show you. Um, he responded, his responsiveness, that's what we dealt with that week, the need for our responsiveness. He, he went, he left his family, his kindred, his father's house, his place of comfort, um, and he started moving. As he moved, he began to gain clarity on where to go. Um, and so then we fast forwarded um, last week to the 13th chapter of Genesis, uh, where he was repositioned. And we talked about repositioning. Um, we talked about how once situations and circumstances called for Lot um, to separate and go in another direction, his nephew Lot, that then the voice of God reopened in his life and began to give him more clarity and more instruction. Um, and he was centered in a place where God could speak again um, and so we, we're starting to see a little bit of some cycles. Abraham kind of, he has a lot of faith, uh, but then he brings some of his own stuff with him. Uh, he obeys, but then there'll be a little parenthetical part that isn't quite exactly what God said. Uh, it causes him to bump his head. He chasing after that. And it's, it starts to be a bit, even with the father of faith, the father of many nations, the 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 patriarch of the the church the um historical father figure uh of the children of israel uh nations were birthed out of him we're not there yet but we know the end of the story there's already spoiler alerts in here uh we know that um almost every modern faith where there is not agreement uh among a lot of things almost all of them talk about abram about Abraham because modern faith was birthed out of him. Um, not just Christianity, like modern faith, uh, uh, multiple movements, which is an interesting thing. Um, uh, but anyway, even in him, we see the ups and the downs. We see obeying, but not quite all the way, but then getting back in order um, and it's this thing that really should feel pretty familiar to right. most of us. Because right. <laughs> uh, if I'm honest, I, my life has not been a straight line. My life, mm -hmm. too, has been hills and valleys and crooks and turns mm -hmm. and dips and jumps and hoping I land from the jump on my feet and mm -hmm. uh, getting back up again after you fall. That is the nature of um of this walk yeah uh if you'll be honest um i haven't met one yet who just woke up did it all right and kept moving in a straight line directly to their purpose directly to the will of god for their lives right all the way into their promise uh even the children of israel the chosen people of god didn't go straight to their promise and this is right. uh the beginning uh, of that journey that we've been reading about in Genesis here of them journeying toward the promise. And we see uh, that Abram, his name hadn't even been changed to Abraham yet, that Abram is beginning to demonstrate what we know we will see more of with the children of Israel as they're trying to get to this elusive promise of God. Uh, they they now, by the time he gets all this worked out, they know where their promised land is. He's God has already spoken to Abram in the chapters that we've looked at about where the promised land is. Uh, but yet he's beginning this up and down journey. And so as we get to chapter 14 of Genesis, um, around the 11th verse, uh, you have to read the first 10 on your own. Uh, but really what happens is we start seeing that there are nations that begin to uh, go to battle against other nations. I'll, I'll simplify it like that. There are nations that begin to go to battle against other nations. Um, and in one of the battles, one of the nations that is attacked is 
the land that Lot, Abram's nephew, went to when they split up uh, the land of Sodom. And so in verse 11, um, Sodom and Gomorrah are getting whooped. Um, and so the victorious invaders then plundered Sodom and Gomorrah and headed for home, taking with them all the spoils of war and the food supplies. They also captured Lot, Abram's nephew, who lived in Sodom and carried off everything he owned. But one of Lot's men escaped and reported everything to Abram the Hebrew, who was living near the oak grove belonging to Mamre the Amorite. Mamre and his relatives, Eskel and Aner, were Abram's allies. When Abram heard that his nephew Lot had been captured, he mobilized the 318 trained men who had been born into his household. Then he pursued Kedorlaomer, or something like that, Kedor, Kedorlaomer, Kedor, we'll call him <laughs> Key. Uh, then he pursued Key, Key's army until he caught up with them at Dan. There he divided his men and attacked during the night. Key's army fled, but Abram chased them as far as Hobah, Hoba, north of Damascus. Abram recovered all the goods that had been taken, and he brought back his nephew Lot with his possessions and all the women and other captives. Um, I might come back and read some more of these verses, but I want to stop right there um, and highlight right there uh, the, the kind of ultimate part, climax of this uh, story the plot intensifies in verse 16 where it says you know abram mobilized well it says it up in uh verse 14 he mobilized 318 men that have been trained since birth that were born into his household uh that is his servants that is the people who he brought with him when he left his father's house that were a part of his household his servants that were born there as trained and he they had been trained uh, it says they were trained men who had been born into his household. Um, and he took them, and it says in verse 16, Abram recovered everything. He recovered all the goods that had been taken, and he brought back his nephew Lot with his possessions and all the women and other captives. Um, I want to talk with y'all just for a few minutes Um and Camille's going to do most of the talking today. She just doesn't know it yet. Um, watch, watch how it works. Watch. Um, <laughs> she doesn't believe me. Um, and, but I want to talk a little bit about recovery. Recovery. Um, I really believe that there is a release happening in the lives of people who are connected to this ministry uh, to recover <laughs> things that they thought were lost, mm. to recover mm -hmm. uh, the way they see themselves, mm -hmm. to recover the dreams they once had that they've allowed to kind of <clears throat> fizzle out, trickle away, uh, to recover hope, to re... Oh, God, I feel it. To recover... Um, efforts to recover uh, self-esteem. <laughs> and so uh, Abram, every time Lot gets brought up in this text, we're seeing a cycle here. He keeps fooling with Lot and Lot keeps having him end up in <laughs> bad right. Situation. That's a problem. Lot like, is just... a lot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, lot. I see what I did there. Like, lot is a lot. I mean, and I don't know about you, but I, I, I hesitate to say it, but I think we all have some lots in our life. Mm. <laughs> uh, I think that there are some people attached to our lives that at times 
are more of a handful than the fruit they produce. Uh, so Lot didn't stay home <laughs> when Abram was trying to leave his daddy's house. He said, I'm coming too. Abram like, all right, I mean, it's family. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I'm about to... I'm about to step on some stuff. Uh, so we make room for uh, our family. It's family. I have to. There's this inherent responsibility. I'm not saying that that's always a bad thing. There's this, but there's this inherent loyalty. There's this inherent um, con connection and responsibility. The onus feels like it's on us that even if it's not what God said, uh-oh, we have to take care of our family, right? Um, but we see this cycle, this pattern, Lot shows up, God stops speaking. <laughs> yeah. Abram says, let's split up. Our houses are fighting. Uh, they split up. God starts speaking again. Mm -hmm. Um, now the enemies come in attacking certain parts of this promised land and Abram is minding his own business. He really doesn't have anything to do with this fight whatsoever. He's really still an outsider in the promised land. Like he's not there to defend the people who are inhabiting his promise. Mm. He very easily uh, could have just been like, well, let them kill each other. Maybe that's the vehicle that's going to allow me to walk into my promise uh, easily. But he couldn't do that because a lot, a lot, lot, lot. Uh, and there are times when some of us don't go after what we could go after, or we don't have the peace. That's what it, really where I want to go. We don't have the peace that we could have because we're chasing after our lot. Mm. Thoughts? No, I don't have anything else to add. It's you're covering it. Okay. She wants to prove me wrong. <laughs> so Lot is just caught up in the attack, carried away um, as this land that he's living in that he's not really a part of comes under attack. And um, they take Lot and they take all of Lot's possessions one of Lot's servants gets away. He escaped, the, the word says, and he came and he came straight to Abram. Now, remember, their houses were divided, fighting. Now, one of the people who was probably involved in the fight comes running back to, to Abram. I need help. <laughs> but you need help from me because we were fighting so much that we split up because you were fighting with my people. My people were fighting with you. But when it goes down, now you need me. And what do I do? I come running. Um, but God honors mm -hmm. <laughs> who Abram is. God honors Abram's heart. And God empowers Abram to be able to recover what would have been lost. So... <laughs> Uh, what happens here is, well, I found this interesting. What's up, Darius? I found this interesting. Abram, remember when he left, his household came, servants came. He has, now we haven't found this out until this very moment. He has some stuff in his arsenal that we don't even know he has yet. Um, mm -hmm. This is the first mention in Genesis 14 that, Abram has 318 trained right. warriors uh, in his household. I didn't know that's the kind of moving party this was, right? And he says that these were the young ones who were born into his house. Uh, so his handmaids and his servants who had children, he put the children in his household through training, through boot camp. <laughs> um, and got them ready for war. Uh, and they show here in this 14th chapter that they were capable. 
Um, they were capable of fighting. They were capable of war. Uh, and the text tells us that they chased down Key and them's army. I don't know how to say Key's name all the way. So Kedor. Uh, <laughs> they chased them down. And it says, I, I'm, I'm just really, this verse 16, Abram, it reminds me of another passage of scripture that deals with David, um, where David says, should, should I pursue this enemy um, or not? And the, the word came to David, pursue them and surely you will recover all. This is a, a pattern. This is a trend. This is a um, characteristic of God and how he operates through his people is that he has designed us by nature to be equipped to recover everything that the enemy tries to take from us. Oh man. And so verse 16 says, Abram recovered all the goods that had been taken and he brought back his nephew Lot with his possessions and all the women and other captives. All right. I'm going to read these other verses. One thing I want to point out yeah, before you move do. on though, is um, I like how not only did Abram have resources, he already had invested um, in building up um, what he had. So when he went to another place, he had something with him. Um, he had some power with him, but not only that, uh, he had allies. Mm, Once already. it came time to go and and rescue Lot, mm -hmm. um, so you know that's that is a lot of times a lovely thing when you're doing what the Lord tells you to do. Mm -hmm. He will have some some things set up for you. There will be some connections um, that are just God connections um, because that's what's set up for you in that place. Yeah, yeah. So. I know you got you got some lots, but you also have some allies. Mm -hmm. See, she can find the good in it. That's good. Because <laughs> uh, I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I go back and forth with this, just like Abram goes back and forth, I think. Because like, sometimes I'm like, man, I want to be just like Abram. Other times I'm like, ah, I'm just like Abram. And other times I'm like, I don't want to be anything like Abram. Yeah. And so it's like, it's there is no perfect person. <laughs> All right. And so... Before, before I read this next, these next couple of passages, the word recovery, um, what it means really is a return to your normalcy. Now, here's the reality. There are times when we should be focused on recovery, and there are other times where we should be willing to let it go. Um, I'm, I'm not sold yet on which Abram is at right here. But there are times where you should you should do what it takes, get back what the enemy stole from you, return to your normal. There are other times where you should say, you know what? That was right. that was more of a burden than than a blessing. <laughs> um and it's a challenging thing to be able to know to discern which state the current situation is. Yeah. Should and that's why David prayed that prayer. God, should I go after the enemy who took my stuff or should I just let it go? Uh, but you have to be able to consult, mm -hmm. uh, to consult the Lord, to ask the question and to obey the leading guidance that you receive from him. Uh, because he'll let you know if it's something that you should recover or if it's something that you should just let go. Mm -hmm. um, so another thing recovery is is a regaining of possession or control, a regaining of possession or control. Uh, there are times when our motivation, nobody knows our motivation as good as we know our own motivation. There are times when we want to recover because we want control or we want to save face. Uh, that motivation, that intention is questionable. Uh, there are other times where we want to recover because we really believe that it's what God has for us. He's, that he's ready to empower that. All right. It's complicated. This is complicated. It goes back and forth. I'm, I know I'm talking on both sides of this, but that's the reality of what our lives are like. All right. And so the text continues in verse 17 of Genesis chapter 14. It says that 
after Abram returned from his victory over Kedorlaomer, Ki, Ki, I'm stop trying, uh, and all his allies, the king of Sodom went out to meet him in the valley of Shaba, that is the king's valley. Now, hold on, I'm going to stop right there for a second. Abram is the king of nowhere. Right. <laughs> Abram <clears throat> has no land at this point. He left his father's house to go to a land that God would show him. He got there, it was occupied. He pitched he pitched a tent near the promise. Mm -hmm. He's the king of nothing. Yet he has audience <laughs> Uh, because of the proficiency of these 318 men, because of his leadership, because of his faithfulness, because of his integrity, uh, because of these characteristics that separate Abram from others, he's not a king, but he has audience with kings. Oh, man. I don't know who I'm talking to today. Uh, you might not be the boss but you have audience with the boss. Why? Because you have character, because you have faith, because you have some training, because you operate in excellence, you're catching the attention <laughs> of those in power. Uh, because you know how to handle yourself in situations where others may fall apart, you're catching the attention. Your name is in the mouth of people in rooms that you haven't entered in. Mm -hmm. Uh, because there is something special about you, there is a calling on your life. And I believe that you're only here today. Uh, I don't think he's going to let anybody hear this message uh, that, 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 doesn't, that that doesn't align with. You are here because you have a calling on your life. I know uh, that that doesn't always resonate. Sometimes you're like, how could I have a calling on my life when I've made this mistake, when I've done this, when I've done that? Uh, when sometimes I'm faithful to God, sometimes I'm not. When I have habits that hold me down, when I put loyalties that I have over top of the priority list, over top of God, how could I possibly be the call of the Lord? But remember, we're talking about Abram, who did the same things. Right. All right. Uh, we are complex beings, but you are catching the attention of people with power. You are you have audience with kings. All right. So not just a king, uh, but we see. So key, he defeated key and his allies and the king of Sodom went out to meet Abram in the valley of Shava, which is called the king's valley. Um, <laughs> and verse 18, Melchizedek, the king of Salem and a priest of God most high. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to get stuck in this parenthetical piece here, but Melchizedek is a foreshadowing of Jesus in that he was both priest and king. Uh, he held two positions. He was both priest and king. Uh, Jesus was both priest and king. All right. Uh, I said I wasn't going to get stuck in it, and then I was about to just go ahead and be stuck. But I'm going to keep moving. Um, and Melchizedek, the king of Salem and a priest of God most high brought Abram some bread and wine, bread and wine. What's that remind you of? <laughs> uh, because he's a foreshadowing, uh, of Christ. This is the body and the blood. I'm trying not to get stuck in how cool the Bible is and all these, like this, is how, you know, man couldn't have written it because it's just too much stuff. Uh, he brought in bread and wine. Jesus in the last supper supper offered the body and the blood, the bread and the wine. All right. He's priest and king. This is cool to me. I just, I'm like, I like it. Um, and so anyway, Melchizedek brings a brings Abram some bread and wine. And then Melchizedek blessed Abram <laughs> with this blessing. You see this foreshadowing stuff happening, right? Listen to what Melchizedek says. He says, Blessed be Abram by God most high, creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has defeated your enemies for you. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I, I just got to throw it in real quick. Uh, he's giving you 
audience with kings. He, um, I hope you're receiving this. He um, has kings that are giving you gifts. <laughs> and he has kings that are pronouncing blessings over your life. Um, and what he says is blessed be not just you, but also your God who has defeated your enemies for you. Melchizedek has, has revelation uh, that that battle you just won with those 318, really, they didn't win it. <laughs> it wasn't your power. It wasn't your forces. It wasn't your staff. It wasn't your leadership ability. It wasn't your strategic fortitude. Uh, God fought that battle for you. Um, and so after that, Abram receives the word of the Lord from the king and priest Melchizedek. And it says, then Abram gave Melchizedek the first accounting of tithes that we see in the Bible, a tenth of all the goods he had recovered. All right. Uh, verse 21, the king of Sodom said to Abram, so these kings, he has audience with kings. The king of Sodom said to Abram, give back my people who were captured, but you can keep for yourself all the goods that you've recovered. Seems reasonable. You went and did the work. I, I need the people back, but you know what? As your, as your bounty, keep all the stuff you recovered. Uh, verse 22, Abram replied to the king of Sodom, I solemnly, solemnly swear to the Lord God most high, creator of heaven and earth, that I will not take so much as a single thread or sandal thong from what belongs to you. Otherwise, you might say, I'm the one who made Abram rich. <laughs> I will accept only what my young warriors have already eaten, and I request that you give a fair share of the goods to my allies. Take care of my, my friends, Aner, Eskel, and Mamre. And Mamre. All right. So, I'm sorry, looking at your comments. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, what... Um, I told y'all Camille was going to talk more than me today, so I'm going to prove it. Uh, <laughs> um, so what are your thoughts about um, Abram's response to the king of Sodom when he said, I don't want your stuff? It makes me giggle because <laughs> he's like, no, nah, no, nah, you're not going to make me miss my blessing, first of all. But he's like, you're not going to, I'm not going to give you the opportunity or anyone else the opportunity to say that someone else did this for me. This is all God's work. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving you everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. All I need is my, the the lunch. Just just give me lunch. Uh, what they already ate. Matter of fact, don't even give us any more. Just what mm -hmm. they already ate. Uh, and then we're going to be on about our way. I got my nephew back. He got his stuff back. We're going to go on about our business. You go on about mm -hmm. yours. Uh, <laughs> um, I found that interesting too. Like Abram was like, mm -mm, nope. Uh, and you ha so what does that teach us? You have to be careful about what you receive and who you receive it from. <laughs> some, some, we've, we've reached a point in history and life where we don't reject anything. <laughs> we take the scraps. We take, and then other people say, see, I did that. I, I did that for him. He ain't nobody. Mm -hmm. I remember when he didn't have nothing. You got to be careful uh, about who you're accepting from and what you're accepting. Um, man, <laughs> I just thought of, uh, we had someone once give us a gift. Uh, a very nice person, give us a gift. And we came to find out, like this was years ago, we came to find out recently that some of the stuff had some other spiritual connotations that we weren't aware of. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful what you accept into your house. 
But what I can say is the Lord led me to research this stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's how we can realize, ah, got to remove it. Yep. I didn't even know. Um, I'm reminded. I remember, and, and sometimes people, people do stuff in their well meaning. They don't necessarily mm -hmm. mean any harm. Um, I remember, I'm just, I don't know why I'm going in this direction. This was not, well, my, my mind was going there too. So it's, yeah, yeah. it's needed. Yeah. There, there is supernatural stuff that happens all around us all the time. And sometimes we're just unaware, like with that, with the gift, I didn't research it. I was completely unaware that it had any spiritual connotations, um, that weren't in alignment mm -hmm. with my our spiritual beliefs. stance, yeah. with our spiritual stance. Um, it's just like, and I, sometimes we just, we're so ignorant. I I'm reminded, I remember when we were pastoring, uh, in big rapids, um, one day, uh, somebody found like there were some pennies, uh, mm -hmm. in the window sills. I'm like, what in the world? I didn't know what it was, but it was in such a strategic way. It was like, you knew that they were placed they there. Were placed. Um, actually my mom was the one who, yep. who noticed and pointed it out and showed us that these were placed in every one of the window sills strategically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't think anything of it cause I don't know anything about it, but she was aware and some other people were aware that that's some kind of spiritual stuff that people do. Ah. So mm -hmm. we got rid of them. Uh, um, got rid of them. Prayed, cleansed. Prayed, yep. The blessed the oil. Yep. Blessed oil around the sanctuary. I mm -hmm. mean, and you have to take action. That's the point. Yeah. For one, you got to research. Thank God Camille researched because I'd just be going around not knowing. Um, I don't even know how we ended up all the way here from this text. I know, but this is where we're supposed to be, I think. <laughs> I think so, too. Um, and same thing. When she researched the stuff, the, the very wonderful gift that was given to us, it's, it's gone. Once, as soon as I heard, got an inkling, like, of what it could be, I was like, well, we're going to get rid of that. It's gone. Uh, <laughs> um, so I don't know who that's for. And... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to apologize. I don't know who that's for, but be careful. That's where, that's how we got there. Be careful what you receive and who you receive it from. Um, yeah. The king of Sodom, let's remember, that's who was trying to give <laughs> Abram something. That's why this is, this is making sense. It was, it's well-intentioned. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. But remember, Sodom was the forsaken city, the forsaken country. It was, they weren't in good standing with God. They were on some other stuff spiritually let's just say that um and so abram did not want to be in cahoots or in partnership uh with i saw a question we'll i get to in just a second with something that was completely out of alignment with his faith and his belief system uh you can be in the world but not of the world all right, so I saw a good question. How can I get blessed oil? I need it in this Airbnb. Uh, so I'm I'm going to deputize you and give you a badge. Blessed oil is just oil that's been prayed over. Um, I believe you can touch God. Uh, and I know not everybody says this, but buy you some good good old virgin olive oil. Anoint, bless it. Pray mm -hmm. over it. Pray We'll touch and agree with you on it. And mm -hmm. I'll follow up with you too. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll follow up with you on that. But if I didn't, you can. The oil becomes blessed, not by a person. Mm -hmm. uh, the anointing is reflective of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit for some of you. Um, <laughs> the oil is a represent, representation of the power that we have flowing in, of, and through us already. So bless that oil. Mm -hmm. And even other options are you could go to like a Christian bookstore. Yeah. I'm sure they have um, yeah. different blessed oil that you can pick up too. But still pray, pray over it. Um, if you get some um, olive oil from the store, respect it once you have prayed over it as blessed oil. I don't, I don't think you want to use it for like... Fried chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Use it for what you unless intended. You want some good for. anointed chicken. I don't know. I don't I, know. Yeah, maybe. Hey, I, don't know. I mean, unless the Lord, you know, lets he, you know, go you ahead that way. and dunk it in, in the. But anyway, anoint yeah. your flower too. 
Yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever you need to do, but you have the power. You have the anointing. We preached that a few weeks ago. You have, I have the power. Um, and so um, it made me think of, uh, when was, I don't remember what it was for. Camille ordered me some special. Blessed oil. Blessed oil. I think it was Father's she, Day. She laughed at me so much because it smelled real good. And so I was. He was smelling like this was, blessed oil. It was, had like frankincense and myrrh and all this hey, stuff in I, it. Ah. <laughs> Like Bye. blessed oil for like three days straight. I'm like, are you, you using that for cologne? No, I was letting it permeate. I was like, hey, this is a good gift right here. And I put it on the pores I'm, like cologne. I'm glad to know that you enjoy yeah, it. I still have. I, still I have know you it. have it. I pull it off for special occasions when I need to. When I need to walk in power and authority, I use that special one uh, that she ordered. I think it was from Israel. I think so. I think it was from Israel. Mm -hmm. Israel. That's when you're real holy. You say it Old Testament. Israel. Word. Israel. Like the song, like Christmas songs. All right. Uh, um, so we've talked about repositioning, and this week we've talked about recovery. Um, I believe that this week you're going to see some areas where you have to discern. I know that's mm. not fun. Is this something that I need to chase after? Or is this something that I need to let go? Mm -hmm. um, additionally, based on where or we reject. landed or reject. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, additionally, based on where we landed on this, I think there may be some things um, that have entered some of your spaces mm -hmm. um, that you have to filter out of your space. The environment you create mm -hmm. in your living area, in your in your home, in your Airbnb, in mm -hmm. wherever you, whatever you're habitating in, um, is critical. Uh, there's some things you can't let, you can't let some things in your house. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we're troubled by things and we don't know what, like, it just feel like nothing's working. Something just feels off. Mm -hmm. I just keep feeling, I keep seeing things and hearing things and, uh, sometimes we have to be careful what we let in the airways, through mm -hmm. our TV, through our devices, mm -hmm. through our, uh, look, the word devices right there made me think of mm. something all different. Yeah. We got to be careful about devices, yeah. evil devices. Yeah. Um, we got to be careful what we're allowing in our space and among our children mm -hmm. and among our, just in our home. And um, I heard someone, you know, explain it this way too, certain things that are in your home that are not of Christ, um, that are meant to be for some other type of spiritual realm or world, um, that creates portals in your, in your home. Mm -hmm. Uh, it creates portals for evil entry. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, we have to be very mindful one, and one thing that I learned after I researched, you know, the recent thing that we realized, okay, this is, this shouldn't be in our home. Um, don't be so flattered right away when you receive a gift, like always have, try to remember to have, uh, the Christian, um, you know, goggles on that's that spiritual context. Um, with stuff like that, um, people have, you know, good intentions, but it's not always in alignment with what you believe with, you know, Christian values. So I know for me, the takeaway has been, I need to be more mindful of what we're bringing into the house, even if it was a gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you don't got to be nasty to folks. They don't have to know that it's gone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to protect yeah. the anointing. You have to protect the, you know, godly environment that you have created in your space. And if you have not created a godly environment in your space where you live, then that is definitely something that you should be striving for and making sure that you do. Yeah. And I'm, I'm about done, but have you ever walked into somebody's house Camille's grandmother's house, Nanny's house was a great example of this. When you go in, there's just a peace. Every time I would go in Nanny's house, 
I would be knocked out, sleep, just knocked out. Like, oh my goodness. Some of it might have been the, the wonderful food she was making. But even if she didn't cook, I would just, there was such a peace and a presence there. I would just, be, that's, I always was like, man, I want that. I want that mm -hmm. kind of an environment. We're the ones who create that. Mm -hmm. We're the ones who allow whatever it is mm -hmm. to be. Right. We allow a peaceful environment or we allow a chaotic environment. Uh, so yeah, I mean, think about who knows what other things could have been chained to what uh, was it Melchizedek? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, was trying. No, not it wasn't him. It was uh, the king of Sodom. They didn't say his name. That's who's oh gift the king of Sodom. Yeah. yeah, who knows what could have been attached to to that? Mm. Again, well intentioned. Um. And you never know if at some point that king would have turned on him and been like, I gave you all this, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. that's why even in receiving gifts, we still have to be mindful. Yep. Yep. That's your, that's your word for the day right there. So, um, yeah, I'm looking, we're looking at the comments. Yeah. Attached spirits. Mm -hmm. Be watchful and pray. Yeah. You are the, you are the gatekeeper of what enters your home or what doesn't. Um, and let me tell you this. Um, and I, I don't take this lightly because a lot of times people think that that's a gender role. No, Camille is the watchman, uh, on the wall of a lot of those kinds of things, what enters our space. I'm, I don't, and that's just how God has set it up. That's her gift. For us. That's yeah. her discernment. And, and I, I am a beneficiary. Um, so whoever you are, be watchful, be mindful, um, of what you're allowing in your space. I know we sound all deep today. Um, but no, it's not really deep. It's very it's, real. It's, yeah. It's practical. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, you know what? I think today to end, I'd like to, um, pray. I, I'd like to pray for your recovery. I'd like to pray for your allies Oh my goodness. I could have went on a whole nother route about, about your allies today. I told Camille before we started that I was torn. Um, and there's a couple different directions, uh, we could have went today, uh, your allies and about setting the right environment in your house, what you allow, what you don't allow. Um, so I don't know, Camille, will you start us off praying and I'll wrap us up praying. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for today thank you for blessing us to come together um and to give you glory and to just have a conversation about uh who you are um how you are and how you work in your people and lord we thank you that uh you have shown us examples in the bible um in in people that we speak with and and people that we talk about how you have showed us how recovery is possible. Recovery is possible for us. And we thank you, Lord. We will be looking for that in our lives and in people's lives that we are connected with. We thank you so much for um, this time with you, Lord. We ask for your, your help, your discernment um, as we continue on in this week and, and in the days that are to come. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, we thank you for recovery. We pray for that same discernment to allow us to know what we should go after, what we should reject, what we should let go. Uh, give us clarity. Give us clarity of mind. Give us understanding and, and divine insight to know uh, what to do in those situations that present themselves. God, we pray that you will be a fence around us and around our families. Uh, we thank you that you're protecting us, that you're, you're overseeing us. Uh, that you are shepherding us. Um, and we thank you, God, that you have a plan uh, of protection, a plan for our peace. And God, I pray that you begin to allow the right spirits to flow and to function in our homes. Give us the right environments, yes, uh, so. even on our jobs and, and everywhere where we are, God, give us the right environments and let us contribute to the right environments. Uh, we pray, God, for peace. We pray uh, for for um peace and calm in our environments. We bind the enemy and every attack of the enemy who comes to try to kill, steal, and destroy, uh, to bring negative things into our lives. 
We pray that you will continue uh, to protect us, to guide us, to lead us. And we'll be careful to give your name all the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in your mighty and matchless name we pray, and we love you with our whole hearts. Thank God. Amen. 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 Y'all have a wonderful week. We love you. Thank you all. Yeah. 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 I see you all still commenting and thinking. Mm -hmm. Love y'all. Have a great week. We'll talk to you all soon. All right. See y'all.